Hey folks, welcome to part 23 of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. Our first question is going to be which of the following actions can be used to direct a user to a web page? And we're talking about actions here. Um, so is it going to be go to web page, go to URL, go to hyperlink, or go to website? Again, this might look a little bit tricky because all of these uh, might make sense, frankly, but only one of them is the actual correct answer as it relates to what's actually going to be um, an available option as an action within Tableau. So to answer this, we're gonna go into Tableau and just kind of mimic that behavior. So I have Tableau open up over here. I'm gonna go into a new dashboard, um, or in fact, we can use one of our existing dashboards, maybe from one of the prior videos. And let's say I want to maybe, you know, basically be able to click on this and have me go on Google. So if I click office supplies, it would take me to google.com slash office supplies or google.com slash furniture. How can I set that up? Well, let's say I want to do it at the worksheet level, right? So I click this worksheet. I'm going to go to my when, uh, menu bar. Then I'm going to go to worksheet. I'm going to go to actions. That's where all of my actions are going to be. And now I want to add a particular action, right? And again, I want to be able to direct the user to a particular web page. So what kind of action do we use here? It's not going to be filter. It's not going to be highlight. It's going to be go to URL. Again, it's not going to be go to sheet and not uh, not going to be change parameter or change that value. So of all of these possible options, go to URL is going to be the correct solution. But before we wrap this question up, I just want to kind of show you that behavior. So um, this, the source sheet is going to be, hey, where do you want this action to take place? Where exactly am I picking up this click, right? And that's going to be on this Pi 1 sheet. So I only want to be able to click on Pi 1. And when I do that, I want it to take me to that particular web page. And based on a, a particular behavior, so I can either hover over and, you know, when a user hovers hovers over, they're going to be sent to that web page. Or they can either um, just click on it, which is the select over here, and that's going to take them to that page. Or the third option is menu, which if they click on it, they'll see somewhat of a tooltip and then they'll have the option to click. And I'll demonstrate that we, we can do um, both of those examples. But again, we wanna go to google.com, so www.google.com, and you will see a preview down here of what you're putting together. And we wanna make this dynamic, right? So I'm gonna put a slash, and I'm going to actually um, insert uh, the category, right? That's what I wanna pass. So the, the category um, dimension here, and as you can see, as an example, it's showing me that it's going to go to google.com slash furniture. So if I click OK over here, now I have um, an action established. So if I click on office supplies, right, this orange portion of this pie chart, I'm going to see a menu pop up, which is this. And now this is the hyperlink. If I click on this, this is going to take me to that respective web page. See? So it took me to google.com slash office supplies, which obviously was not found. So we got this error message, but that's how you that's how you go about doing that. And again, in this particular scenario, we used a menu, but the other option, once again, if I go into actions and I go here and I edit, I can also have this be select. Oops. A little interesting choice of where the okay is, but let's click on that. And now if I just click on this, it's gonna take me to that same page, right? So now the menu didn't pop up, it just directly took me there. But for purposes of our question, let's just go back to our question real quick. The solution here will be go to URL. By the way, if you do enjoy videos like this, consider liking the video and subscribing for more content just like this. Next question. The following image illustrates which of the following, and you can select multiple correct options here. So we basically have, um, this pane or, or not not pane essentially this window which says filter and um, after that you have year of order date within these uh, brackets basically and of the available options you have four years so 2019 2020 2021 2022 so what the question is asking is based on what you see here what you know of all of these options what do you see in this image do you see a date part do you see a filter? Do you see a discrete date? 
Do you see a continuous date or do you see continuous years? Which of these is it going to be? So first, let's try to figure out how we even get to this screen, right? So it is a filter, obviously, but how can I get it to come to this screen where, um, you know, based on the order date, I can only look at years um, as far as the options are concerned. So what I can do here is let's open up a new sheet and we're gonna drag order date into filters. And now the first thing you'll see is you'll get this pop-up that specifically asks, how do you wanna filter the order date, right? You can use a relative date, you can use a, a range of dates. You'll also notice next to these that they're green as opposed to the others here where they're blue. And again, if you remember based on the other videos, um, that basically dictates whether it is a continuous field or a discrete field. So basically these would be your continuous dates. These would be discrete dates or date parts, right? So when you're talking about years or quarters or months, those, are, those aren't the actual order date, but that's part of the order date, right? That's a component of the date. A year is a component of a date, which is um, inclusive, inclusive of a month and a day and a year. So in this case, you know, it would probably make sense that we click on years to get something like this. So I'm gonna click next once I click on years. And now you'll see that's exactly how we get to that screen, right? So what did we do exactly? First, obviously we drag something to filter. So it is a filter, it even says filter over here. Then we selected the, the year, if you remember, right? Because it asked us, to, it wanted us to specify how we wanna filter on order date. So that's a date part. The year, again, is a date part. So the first option here obviously will be the correct solution. Um, one of the correct solutions because it is a date part. These are date parts. Um, we're obviously working with a filter. Um, is this a, So is this a discrete date field or more of a continuous date field or continuous years or you know, all of them? Which, you know, how would you put it? So again, that's one of the first thing we uh, first things we covered. When I drag this here and I clicked on years, again, notice this is blue, right? A date part is going to be discrete. It's finite. It can only be a particular year. Like even, even when you talk about months, it could only be, you know, between one through 12. It's not a continuous interval. And because of that, discrete date is basically what we selected here, what we, what we essentially found here. So the first three options here are gonna be the correct solutions. It's not going to be a continuous date. For that, we would have probably had to use a range of, well, not even a range of dates, but that, that would still count as continuous, um, a continuous date. But let's say we had relative date, right? Now there's this ambiguity, it could be, it could be anything. Um, it's no longer discrete. So these last two options aren't going to be the correct solutions. Next question. Dragging a blank field to the color on the marks card will result in a color gradient, while a blank field will result in distinct colors based on a color palette. What exactly does this mean? So let's first start with a blank canvas here, right? Let's say we just had maybe a bar chart, sum of sales, it's the same example um, that we use pretty much in every every demonstration here. But um, let's say we had something like this, so a vertical bar graph. And so the options here are discrete and infinite, continuous and fixed, continuous and discrete, or discrete and continuous. So what this is saying is, for example, um, dragging a discrete field to the color on the marks card will result in a color gradient while a infinite field will result in distinct colors based on a color palette. So what's going to be the solution here? Well, I could tell you this infinite is going, it's, it's really just a distractor. It's not something that actually exists in the Tableau space, Tableau world. So we can disregard that. Um, second option, um, obviously continuous is one option. Fixed is the other option here. So does dragging a continuous field to the color on the marks card result in a gradient? What does that mean? So right now, again, this is a green pill, right? Because we're looking at sales as a continuous measure. If I hold down control or command on a Mac and I drag that to color, what's gonna happen? What is, what is this called? If you pay attention to the legend here, or if you click on color in the marks card and go to edit colors, you will notice this is a gradient, right? It's the same color, or it could be multiple colors, right? You could have, uh, you could have uh, basically a spectrum, but 
the intensity of that value is going to dictate the shade of that color but they're not individual colors right so you have a you have a range of colors but they're not necessarily discrete colors so just just pay attention to what you're seeing here right when i click edit colors this is what you see um conversely if this was a discrete let me undo that real quick undo and let's say this was discrete right if it was a blue pill so I have discrete here. I don't, even, I don't even have to do that here. Let me just drag this back here to color and right click here and go to discrete. Now you'll notice these are individual distinct colors, right? It's no longer one range. And how do you know that? Again, pay attention to the legend. Now each of these is a distinct color. It's no longer a gradient. If you click on color, you go and edit colors, you no longer see that gradient. Instead, what you see is a color palette that you can choose from or you can add your own if you wish and you'll have you know a number of options to select from here you can assign the palette but each individual field because it's discrete or, or sorry each individual item is going to be colored differently because now it is a discrete field and not a continuous field so hopefully that sheds some light but um, based on what we just demonstrated that would suggest that dragging a continuous field to the color on the marks card will result in a color gradient while um, dragging a discrete field, again, the blue pill, will result in distinct colors based on the color palette. So based on what we said, this third option here is going to be the correct solution. Um, so again, it's not gonna be the second option. There's no sense of you know a field being fixed. There are LOD expressions, level of de detail calculations where you would use fix, the fix clause, but in this context, that's not something you would use. The last option here is the opposite of what we're looking for, because obviously in order to get a color gradient, you do have to work with a continuous field, not a discrete field and vice versa for, um, you know, the continuous field uh, with respect to the distinct color. So that's going to be the solution there. Next question. The following image rep uh, represents which feature in Tableau? So basically you have three rectangles here almost kind of looks like you're putting you know bricks together um, and they're almost kind of stacked up on top of one another but kind of not exactly aligned so what does this represent is it an icon is it a visualization what is it um, and of these options specifically what is it going to be is it a dual axis bar chart a union a horizontal bar chart or column alignment and all of these probably make sense um, but let's dive in. So first option is dual axis bar chart. Um, so first of all, if we go over here and let's say I had a bar chart. So I have sales by product and we're gonna make this a bar chart and I'm gonna make this vertical. And then let's say, in, you know, alongside sales, I also wanted profit, right? So I could drag that here and now I have um, you know, basically a dual axis, right? And now it kind of defaulted back to a particular mark. So now it's more of a circle shape rather than a square. Um, but that's besides the point. Are we able to replicate this view by creating a dual axis bar chart? And again, this is not even a bar chart because it completely misconstrued what we had when we introduced this secondary measure here as a dual axis, right? That's what you see over here. So that can't be the for, that can't be the correct solution. How about union? Again, what is the union? Where is that performed? Is that something on the sheet? No, that's going to be in the data source tab. That's when you're actually connected to a data source. You might want to maybe perform joins or unions or maybe not do any of that. But if you look on the left hand side where you have all of your different tables, again, once you're connected to a particular data source um, and connection or connection rather, um, and then you have your union underneath that. So um, you're able to go in here into the physical layer, you know, do your whatever magic you want to do with the tables in terms of performing a join or you could also do a union, in which case you would be vertically stacking one data set on top of another. So that's what that icon represents if you look closely. So that second option here is going to be the correct solution. Now, how about this, you know, the other option? So the third option, horizontal bar chart. That's one of the first visuals that we had here. So let's say I have sales um, over here 
and well that there you go that is a horizontal um, bar chart we could even have categories here that's still not giving you what this is because this is an icon it's not a visualization uh, again last option here also might look correct something along the lines of column alignment but there's no such thing um, as it relates to this question. So that's not gonna be the solution here. The only solution here will be union. Quick pause. If you like these videos, but you're serious about acing the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam or Certification, I've got news for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which questions you got right or wrong and what the correct solutions were. Now, there are a limited number of spots available, so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know, practice makes perfect. And that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, be sure to like the video if you haven't already. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, as always, I will catch you on the next one. Thank you for watching. Yeah.